Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Hamish Hodder and we are back with another individual stock analysis. This week, we're gonna be having a look at stamps.com Inc. Uh, it's also another American company um, and I'm really excited to talk about it because the numbers just look absolutely phenomenal and a little bit of exciting news. This is the first video that I'm recording with my new camera. Finally, I'm not recording on my smartphone anymore. <laughs> I've got, I went out and bought a Canon 80D. So hopefully the quality is a little bit better and a little bit smoother for you guys. So hopefully you enjoy that and let me know what you think about that down in the comment section below. But let's just get straight into this one as per usual in my analysis videos. We're gonna start off with that company overview. What is the company about? How do they make their money and that sort of thing. Then we're gonna have a look at the economic moat. Does it have some kind of long-term competitive advantage that's going to allow it to thrive in the marketplace? Then we're gonna have a look at management's effectiveness in terms of investing capital within the business and also in terms of managing their debt. Then of course, we're gonna go and have a look at my value matrix, see what kind of return we can expect to make over the next 10 years if investing in stamps right now. And lastly, as always, we're gonna have a look and do an intrinsic valuation, come up with a buy, hold or sell decision for this stock. Just before we get started, I need to say that I am not a financial advisor. Everything here is just for educational and entertainment purposes only. I don't know your personal circumstances, so please do your own research. And if you need advice, please consult a financial advisor. If you enjoy this video, please let me know by becoming a subscriber. It helps me out so much and it's been amazing to see this channel grow. If you have any suggestions, leave them down in the comment section below. But for now, Let's jump into it. All right, so stamps.com, it's a pretty easy business to understand. It's an American corporation, and essentially they provide the service of allowing you to do online internet-based mailing and postage services. So basically, if you're a small business or you're an online retailer or something like that, they provide the services for you to print the shipping labels for the United States Postal Service. Um, and they also provide you with a scale when you sign up, you pay a monthly fee, and they actually send you out a digital scale so that you can be accurate when sending out your parcels and that sort of thing. Aside from their main business, which is providing that postal service, they also provide something called photo stamps, where customers can upload their own photos or logos or whatever they want, their designs, and they'll actually make customized stamps for you for sending out parcels and uh, letters and that sort of thing. So you can actually upload some photos, maybe it's your, you know, your family or something, or maybe it's the logo of your business and you can create custom stamps, which is really cool. So they are, they are the two components of their main business. At the current time, they currently have a market capitalization of about $4.1 billion. They have a PE ratio of 23 and they don't pay a dividend. All right, so let's talk about the economic moat. Does stamps have some kind of long-term intrinsic characteristic about it that's gonna allow it to be a long-term competitor in this space? Now, a really important part of stamps business is that they have a deal with the US Postal Services which involves discounted postage fees. However, these deals need to be renegotiated from time to time, and it just so happens that this year they are needing to renegotiate their contract and there are some concerns out there that when this is renegotiated and when they come up with a new deal, the, the deal for stamps will be significantly worse than it was in the past. And they actually outlined these concerns in the last quarterly report and it sent the stock down over 13%. So it is clearly a very, very forefront concern of shareholders. If you remember in the past, Trump has actually gone after Amazon for supposedly ripping off USPS with their deal because Amazon has a, a similar kind of deal with the USPS, um, which allows them to cheaply post all their products and that sort of thing. And Trump has tweeted about them and saying that they're ripping them off and that it's a terrible deal for uh, USPS. So I would assume that Trump has a similar position when it comes to stamps. They would He wouldn't like that stamps is getting a good deal on postal services um, through the USPS. So there is a bit of concern that there that if Trump has any kind of influence in the USPS, that when the deal is renegotiated, it could be significantly worse for stamps.com. Personally, if I was looking to invest heavily in this stock, I'd want to see that deal uh, be renegotiated before I want to invest because it, it seems like it's a very, very significant part of their business. And if fees go up twice or three times as much because they renegotiate and don't get a good, good of a deal, then it could significantly impact their growth prospects. And it's gonna mean that our assumptions for their growth 
uh, over the next 10 years would have to be significantly lower um, to allow for the fact that there's gonna be these higher fees. So what I normally will do is I'll do what's called a qualitative analysis, which is what I just did. I look at the qualities of the business and see if there's some kind of intrinsic uh, characteristic there that's gonna allow it to compete over the long term. And then I look at a qualitative, a quantitative moat. Um, and I try and see if that qualitative moat is backed up in the numbers because generally, if a company has a competitive advantage, a long-term one, if you look at the numbers over the past 10 years, their past performance, you'll see that they have really high growth because they're able to acquire heaps and heaps of customers. And that growth will be getting stronger and stronger, meaning that competition isn't able to eat into its market share and affect its business. However, when we're talking about a company like Stamps that has a contract that is such a pivotal part of their business, the contract for the past 10 years, so if we look at the past 10 years of data, they had one specific contract. We can't use those that data to project out into the future because if the contract is different, then the growth numbers really represent the growth when they had a different economic moat. Because let's say that the contract where they had a really great deal with USPS is their strongest economic moat. If that deal goes away, they no, no longer have that economic moat and those past performance numbers are not going to be representative of the future performance. So we've got to be careful with that, but let's just have a look at their numbers and see how their performance has been over the past 10 years. All right, so as you can see, the performance of this company has been absolutely exceptional over the past 10 years. And I spoke about this company a little bit in my YouTube stock portfolio series, which comes out every single Saturday. And I'm actually looking at this company to add to our public portfolio, but I thought I would dedicate a, uh, an individual analysis to it because um, it, it looks like a very interesting company. And as you can see, sales growth has been very strong, 20% over the long term and increasing every single year, which is perfect. EPS growth has been 36% over the long term and each and every year ramping up, which is incredible. They did 100% EPS growth in the last year, which is amazing. Equity growth has been 23% over the long term, really good. Again, ramping up each and every year. And same with free cash flow, 37% over the long term and 36% in the last year. Um, and yeah, it's had some even stronger years in between, but it's held strong at 30 plus percent. So that is exactly what we like to see. So clearly those numbers are fantastic, but in order to use those numbers to extrapolate into the future, we want to be sure that their economic model, the long-term competitive advantage is still in place. And for me, that means that we want to see this deal come through and we want to see that this deal is more or less the same thing and it's not going to significantly impact the business. This is where understanding the business at its core and having knowledge about the business model is really, really important because you need, you need to be able to make a judgment about whether or not this deal is going to dramatically impact the competitive advantage that this company has. All right, so now let's have a look at management. How effective has management been for us? And we like to look at this over two dimensions. First, we like to look at how effective they've been at investing capital within the business. And of course, as always, we look at the return on invested capital. So for stamps, the five year average return on invested capital has been 18.8%, which is incredibly high. That's a really, really strong ROIC. And it tells us that management is really, really effective at taking all their resources and making internal investments to generate new income. Then their last year ROIC has been 30%, which is crazy high. It's one of the best I've ever seen. Uh, and it means that they're very, very effective. And we like to see that the five year is smaller than the one year because it means that not only are they effective over the long term, they're getting more and more effective as time goes on. And in the last year, they've been extremely effective with that 30% result. The other dimension we like to look over is their debt management. How effective have they been at managing their debt? Are they keeping it under control? Have we got any concerns about a recession coming up and their ability to control their debt levels and stay solvent through a recession? And again, Stamps has just blown me away with this. Their current ratio, which looks at their current assets and their current liabilities over the next 12 months, they have a current ratio of 2.36, which is incredibly high. I like to see above two, which means that they easily pass that. And then I like to look at the debt to equity ratio, which gives us a big broader picture at their debt. And we like to see that they have two times as much equity in the business as debt, which means they have a debt to equity ratio of below 0.5. And stamps again, blew me away. 
they have a debt to equity ratio of 0.36, which is incredibly low. It's exactly what we want to see as shareholders. All right, so now we've had a look at those, let's go and have a look at the value matrix and see what kind of return we would expect to make if we started to invest right now. And even if we started to invest at a little bit cheaper, if we waited for a bit more of a pullback and then started to invest. So at first glance, this value matrix looks really, really good. There's lots of green. However, we've got to be careful because there are some strong assumptions being made in this table. The slowest growth rate we've got is 7%. So like I just mentioned in the economic moat section, if that deal is renegotiated and it significantly hurts their business, then we need to be sure that they're not going to be growing at less than 7% per year because that would mean that on this, this table would not be representative of how the company is going to perform. Then we have a few more. We have 15%, 30%, 35%, and 44%. And 44% is probably too high. I probably shouldn't have that in there, although uh, the spreadsheet has just calculated this automatically for us. So I'm actually gonna show you how you can change these if your table spits out way too high of a number. So if we come over to Yahoo Finance and we have a look, we can see that over the next five years, they're expected to do 15%. So we should probably put 15% in the middle. So we're gonna just go in here and edit this and we're gonna change this to 15% and just say, don't show for five minutes and that's fine. Make sure you're only editing the bottom table because the top table will automatically do it for you. So I'm gonna go 15%, 10%, 5% and then over the top, we're gonna have 20 and 25. And that just gives us a sort of a, a broad array of results with the middle result being what the analysts are expecting from this company over the next 10 years. So now we can see that a worst case scenario, if they grow at 5% per year and they only have a PE ratio of 20, then we're still going to make about a 1.6% return each year for the next five years. At the other end of the scale, if they continue to maintain their extremely high growth and they do 25% each year for the next five years and they have a PE ratio of 40, then we would make 39% return each and every year for the next 10 years, which means we would be buying the stock at about $230 per share and we would be selling it in five years time for over $1,100 per share, which is a huge return on this stock. So that's given us a little bit of a look at the value matrix and what return we can expect to make over the next five years. But let's do an intrinsic valuation and come up with a buy price, a price in which we would be happy to sink large amounts of money into this stock because we will be confident that we're going to, at the very least, make 15% per year on this stock. So in order to do this, I've assumed that their growth over the next five years is going to significantly slow down. And whether that's due to a poor uh, contract that's been negotiated or just other reasons, I just like to be very, very conservative with my numbers. So I'm gonna use a 12% growth rate over the next 10 years. Using that growth rate, we come up with a fair value of $252 per share. And if we discount that by 50% for our margin of safety, we get a buy price of $126 per share. Now, $126 per share is a long way from the current stock price of 226. It's about 100% off, maybe about 40 or 45% discount. And you might think, when is that ever going to happen? But if we have a recession in the next couple of years, we very might very likely we'll see the stock price come into that range. And using a 12% growth rate is pretty small. It's a pretty weak assumption to make considering they've done almost 30% EPS growth each and every year over the past five years. So we could actually use an EPS growth rate of 30% and we'd probably come up and it would say that we have a buy at the current stock price but that's a really, really strong assumption to make. And it's not one that I'm looking to make when I'm trying to be really conservative, especially when the analysts are saying that they're going to do about 15% over the next five years. If they're saying 15% and I'm gonna assume 30%, I think that's just a little bit too unrealistic because they do a lot more research than I do. And if they've come to that consensus, then we want to be choosing a growth rate that's near what the analysts are suggesting. And I've picked 12%, you might pick something a little bit above 15%, but whatever you pick, make sure you're being conservative. And regardless of what you pick, if it's in that 
12 to 17 percent range you will find that at the current stock price it's really just not a buy yet we need to see a significant pullback and maybe if they renegotiate and the deal isn't as good maybe we'll see the stock price fall way further than it should and then that will pose as a buying opportunity I hope you guys enjoyed learning about stamps.com. I certainly did. It's a company that I hadn't heard of before until last week when I looked into it for my YouTube stock portfolio series. Very interesting company that I'm going to be watching over the next few years. Make sure you leave a like and let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed, why not join the team, hit subscribe and get weekly updates. I do stock analysis on Tuesdays, I do a bit of a random video midweek on Thursdays, whether it's news or something else or you know my portfolio update or something like that. And then on Saturdays, I have my YouTube stock portfolio series. Uh, new episodes come out on Saturdays. And also, if you haven't seen my podcast with Brandon from the Aussie Wealth Creation YouTube channel, that also comes out on Saturdays on his channel. It's about an hour of us just talking stock markets. So make sure you guys go check that out. But for now, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.